All right. Hopefully you have some time to practice that a little bit. Um, and you'll have plenty of time to extend your creativity. Um, we gotta get to this. This is, uh, it gets more and more fascinating as we go. And this next section is really, really cool. So let me just uh, throw on some tunes. Keep me I play a lot of metal in the morning. It has something to do with sitting in traffic and driving. You, you, you wouldn't understand unless you were a gearhead or a propeller head. Anybody worth their salt in the AEC industry understands the difference in the music you play in the morning and the music you play on the way home. <laughs> if you ever been st stuck at the Holland Tunnel for two hours and then another three hours to get home after you get to Jersey. So, any of you commuters, you gearheads, um, hopefully, hopefully I can resonate to you. But this section, uh, this is really cool. So like I said earlier, we loaded the wall wrapping, C13, uh, chapter 13 uh, project. But let me just throw something to the queue, because wrapping a wall is, is something um, different to everyone. Let me just get something in the queue for the next song. What would I know about wall wrapping? What would I know about wall wrapping? I don't know. I, I know that I, I can't find what I'm looking to find. But what would I know about wrapping? Alright, let's just hold that thought for the next tune. Alright, so we're at the uh, C13 wall wrapping download from the Cybex Wiley Publishing website. Hopefully you are on the same uh, page as I am. I'll give you a quick review. Um, just if you, if you don't know where that is, I'll show you. Depending on where your network is, I don't know your network architecture. I don't know if it's token ring <laughs> or not. So again, I partitioned and I have a D and I downloaded it there and all of the files that are available in the exercise. So, again, that's just for those that are uh, catching on now. You'll have to go really, really far back in time in order to keep up with where we've been, but it shouldn't really intimidate you if you're a little younger than I am, but if you're older than I am and your job is on the line, you should be worried. You should worry about that. The culling has started long ago. Now, I'm not going to get into a, a biological uh, shaking off of fleas or of a host organism, but understand that this is a class for pros and those aspire to be professionals, uh, not those riding on the coattails of someone else. So, now, Wall wrapping. This is fascinating. Creating layer wrapping. To create a layer wrapping solution for openings that reflect real world conditions, you must define two settings. First, select the layers of the wall structure you want to wrap and check the boxes in the wraps column of the edit assembly dialog box. You must then specify the default wrapping behavior for all wall, uh, for the wall type. Now I wanted to say all because it's going to affect all the walls that are of that type. That's why I have to stress again, and I re reiterate this to myself, if you want two walls, or if you, you have, you only have four ways, three ways to create a new wall system, these aren't RFAs. You can't load a wall family. You can duplicate it within the project environment, copy the project standards from another project. And what was the third option? The third option was to copy and paste from another project. Um, you can't um, load in 
Um, it's not a loadable family. It's an in-place family that can be duplicated to create this wall system that you want. So let's take it slow this morning. This is really, uh, we're going to really get into the geometry of this. And I'm not faking it. I'm not faking it. We're going to create a wrapping solution because this is where you could demand that your audience understand that there's a difference between drafting platforms and that software can be designed to supersede inferior systems, inferior methodologies, inferior workflows. I don't make the rules. I just try to pay attention in class. So these default settings can be set. The wrapping behavior. Well, we're in project. We're in the project now. In the project. And if we look at the wall pro properties and their constraints, you'll see. Is that there are so many parameters and constraints and variables that we could set to reiterate that. But the two that are important are wrapping and inserts, do not wrap, and wrapping at ends, none. Two settings. So now, if we go into the structure, edit assembly dialog box, You'll see there's a, uh, a radio button here that allows you to turn wrapping on and off. Let's turn it on. We'll do a, a mix. Let's turn it on. Make sure the boss isn't watching. We're sending notes oh, in a cloud. Shh, don't tell them. It has a lot to do with music. Don't tell them that. They don't understand what a note is. What do they know about mixing? Shh, wall wrapping. This is going to get a little bit um, tricky, but you'll be able to get through this. Specifying the layer wrap settings in a wall type alone may not be sufficient to generate the graphic results you desire. Another set of rules established in hosted families allows you to further customize how layers in a wall will wrap to inserted objects. The following exercise will illustrate the functionality. Begin by opening C13 wall wrapping, RVT or C13 wall wrapping metric from the book's webpage, cybex.com, go, Mastering Revit 2018. Activate the level one floor plan. And you should see a wall with an inserted window. Open the window and, and blow the smoke. So that out there, get some air freshener just in case a smokers were like the plague. Okay, so. Now that we have that open, select the wall, open the, pro open the properties palette, which it will do automatically, and click edit type. Notice that the wrapping at inserts is set to do not wrap and that wrapping at ends is set to none. Wrapping at inserts is set to do not wrap parameters construction parameters, do not wrap, wrapping at ends, none. And then just uh, close, click OK to close that dialog box. I want you to note that, that it's set that way. This wall is set that way right now. Select the inserted window and click Edit Family on the Modify Windows tab in the ribbon. Lots of families. 
Lots of families. We're going to be editing a family. So speaking of windows, select the window. Within the context of selecting it, within the modify slash windows ribbon, under the mode, select the edit family toolbar tool, which allows you to modify the family using the family editor. After mod modifying the family, load it into the projects in which you want to use it. Well, we have project one open, open. But now we're going to open up two files at once. We're going to have an RVT and an RFA. Now, this window exists in this project. It, ha it has a location on, in your directory tree, in your, in your cloud. It's located somewhere. Make a note of that. Now, this RFA file is the window itself, RVT project. RFA, Revit family, and it's uh, defaults to this view, view one. And what we want to do is get to the uh, the floor line reference level. When the window family opens, go to the project browser and activate the floor plan named floor line. Now, as you'll notice, view one will still be open. You can close that, so not to clog up your canvas. Because as you open up more and more windows and, and tile them, your, 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 your compound eye is going to triangulate into a conical uh, vertex. And you don't really necessarily want that or you're gonna go blind. So try to keep your canvas as clean as possible. Now, I'm on my third cup of coffee. So this is gonna, this may turn into what we had last night when we rushed into chapter 13 reorganizing our debts. So we're at the floor line, uh, floor plan for lack of a better word, reference plane. But as you can see, this is where it's going to be inserted. So I, I don't want to get too much into this because we can get into the family editor shortly. But we're going we're gonna to take baby steps to get there because this is so powerful. You want to flex, you can flex. This is a little stronger than parametric blocks. Parametric blocks are great in AutoCAD, but this is much, 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 much more. Much more. You will notice that this window family has been slightly modified from the original fixed window family in the Revit default library. Or you won't, you could go to the Revit default library for this particular window. Um, this, this default window, C13 fixed window, and you find it, and you'll notice that it's been modified and compare and contrast, if you'd like. Well, uh, I'm not gonna do that right the second because we can't go off on a tangent because we're gonna be getting into the important Things that's going to define whether or not you're qualified to perform this function. Or if you need somebody looking over your shoulder every five minutes, how much um, mentoring and tutori uh, tutorials you're going to need, how much practice you're going to need, whether or not you're able to hit the ground running, or if you're going to fake it until you make it. So now, Two reference planes have been added that allow the depth of the window frame and the wall wrapping to be customized. Select the reference plane that's parallel to the window and just below the window panel. Its name should be displayed at the right end of the plane as closure. In the properties palette, find the parameter named wall closure and make sure the option is checked as shown in figure 13.10. Well, I'm going to show you that. As you can see, this is the exterior side of the wall. And within this family, a wall was drawn. Basic wall. This is the interior side. And the, the edges of the window are equidistant from the center of the window. With a distance parameter. Equidistant. But the reference planes that we're talking about 
are, are is this one. Closure, reference plane, reference plane closure. Well, they said two. Well, there's this one. You have to hit tab to get to it. This isn't named. It's just, it's a reference plane. But if we zoom in on it and take a look at really what it is um, referencing or, or dissecting, it's a, it's double pane glass, double pane. So there's a distance here. There's a distance. And as you can see, these aren't parameters yet. These aren't constraining parameters. Nor is this a constraining parameter. This is a constraining parameter. Outer frame offset. That's a constraining parameter. Just gets you acclimated to constraining. Because we haven't really tweaked, we, we talked about it, I used the word. It makes a lot of, it doesn't, may not make a lot of sense to you um, until you actually see it um, in, in, in uh, practice. So selecting the reference plane that is parallel to the window just below the window panel, it should be displayed at the right end of the plane as closure. In the properties palette, reference planes have properties. Find a parameter named wall closure and make sure the option is checked. Create a dimension between the exterior of the sample wall and the wall closure reference plane. Okay, well, that should be simple. Aligns. Now you could select the reference plane easily, but notice that when we go to the wall, exterior wall, we can't select it. Oh, we can select the reference plane that is coplanar or coincident with the exterior wall, but that's not what it's set. It said create a dimension between the exterior face of the sample wall and the wall closure reference plane. This reference plane and the exterior wall. Now you would think rather that you could tab and, and get that exterior wall. And in, in this case I can, but there's another way to ensure that you're picking and selecting what you want to select. Because when you select a wall, by default, you'll notice it's going to the wall center line. But you could have that default to the wall faces during selection, or center of core, or faces of core. So let's go to wall faces. And notice when we hover over the wall, we'll be able to a little easier select a face without tabbing through what's superimposed and coincident with what we're trying to select. You, you need to be able to pick uh, in depth because there are certain things that are over other things. And, and these are the tools that will help you do that. And, and this is why I stress the intuitiveness of this platform. So let's do that. Let's grab the exterior wall, let's drag a dimension down to the reference plane closure. Let's just drag it out away and don't have this extension line or tick mark touch anything else, but you get two dimensions. So drag away from the model before you click the family and then click. And then you'll see you're still in the dimension tool. As you can see, you're still in the dimension tool and you have transparent commands that you can invoke. So get out of it by hitting escape or just going to the modify. Or run home and hit modify to get out of there or just hit escape. When I do this, I smoke less when I'm trying to convey my point. But sometimes it falls on deaf ears. Sometimes it falls on deaf ears. Just to throw a quick caveat, these families are addressable. Everything exists in space and time. Everything exists within space and time. 
family lines of products. Anderson, Ideal, Bayonne Window and Door. All right, so, not to throw in my New York accent, Bayonne Window and Door. I'm going off on a tangent. We have the dimension, it's 11 and 5 eighths. We ensured that wall closure construction variable was checked so that it's included as a variable, as a parameter. If we didn't have a check, it wouldn't be a selectable parameter. So you may need to use the tab key to ensure that you have selected the wall reference and not the center line of the wall or any other extraneous reference plane. Look up the word. If you don't know what it means, look up extraneous. Extraneous. Press the escape key or click the modify button to exit the dimension command and select the dimension you just created. <coughs> I guess that's why they call it window pane. That's an M&M tune. Wall wrapping. That's a good one. Why don't we uh, cue that up? Even though I do like this song. No, 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 no. I'm too, uh, my feeling, my feeling, ambiance, or my feeling persistence of tools. I'm feeling persistence of tools. Uh, I, I need to uh, hit the hammer a little harder. So let's get back to where we were. Come on, ahead in three, two. Let's take our time. Put your headphones on. But don't let them see your monitor. They, they, they like to walk around behind you and look at what you're looking at. You always have to have, you know, you have to remember, they try to watch what you're doing to see if you're on the internet. You know, they try to watch to see if you're on, that's all they do. They don't really know what's going on, these bosses that you may encounter in life. But they just want to walk around and make sure you're not browsing the internet, doing nothing. Shh, don't, don't let them know. So we're not doing anything. know the difference between 50 and 60 hertz all right don't let them know what, is, what would they know about arcs Shh, don't be grudge but again with this money when there's this amount of money on the table there are lots of sneaks in the brand okay so select the dimension on the options bar. Find the label drop-down list and choose add parameter. Label in the properties of this dimension is none. And there's a few that have already been created for you. But we're going to create a new one. It's create parameter. Opens the global parameter properties dialog where you can create a global parameter. Associate global parameters with dimensions or element properties to drive or report values. Family parameter. Parameter data. In the parameter properties dialog box, type exterior wall closure. In the name field and click OK to close the dialog box. But before you do, let's take a look. Family parameter cannot appear in schedules of tags. Discipline, common. Type of parameter length by default because we picked the dimension. 
in parameter, group parameter value uh, under dimensions, division geometry, electrical, electrical circuit, lighting loads, electrical engineering, energy analysis, fire protection, forces, green building properties, IFC parameters, mechanical flow, materials and finishes. Group it under construction. So you can group your parameters. And there's so many parameters. There are so many parameters. You know, just to um, switch gears for a second, think about your riser diagram and your one line. <laughs> you know, think about it. How you can work your model from your one line diagram. The, the power of this thing is, is, uh, is, is uh, goes beyond the, your, your wildest imagination. If you're an electrical engineer, think of what you could do with your one-line diagram and how with the bidirectional associativity, by changing the parameters of your, your electrical switch gear and all of your circuitry, and your electronic breadboard devices, components, think of what you could do to the values of the devices throughout the project with the click of a button. <laughs> it's, it, it's, a, it's a simulator. It'll, it'll, uh, it'll return. It'll return dividends to you if you're, uh, if you're subscribing to my line of reasoning. So we have an exterior wall closure parameter that is 11 and 5 eighths by default. I'm taking my time on this. Click load into project from the family editor panel in the ribbon. You may be prompted. You may be prompted to select a project or family if you have more than the two sample files open. When prompted, with the family already exists dialog box. Select overwrite the existing version. <laughs> All right. It almost sounds like a generation skipping tax of <laughs> the IRS uh, <laughs> filing status that you could probably use a generation skipping transfer tax. Yeah. Overwrite the existing family. Oh, that's horrible. That's horrible. Can you imagine? You got a firm with a family name for decades or millennia, and you just peel the letters off the, the wall of the building. Uh, it's, it's hard, like, like Google did to the Port Authority building down, down in uh, Lower Manhattan. <laughs> when prompted with the family or the exist dialog box, select overwrite the existing version. Hostile takeover bids. Again, I write to Chiller, Masterpiece Theater. You know, uh, <laughs> City Council moves to condemn. It, it's, a, it's a horrible world. It's a horrible world. Mergers, acquisitions, eminent domain, easements, right of way, condemnation of structures, slumlords. <laughs> New construction, gut rehabilitation construction. What line of business are you in? Are you into building structures up or knocking them down? You have to look at that. Are you an investment banker? Are you a venture capitalist? Are you? Uh, what is your intent? <laughs> what are you going to do with this software? It it has ramifications. I I know that I I slow down and I, this may not be what what you expect from a class. It could very well be very unorthodox. Very unorthodox, this class is. It's not what you expected to see. I'm, I'm sure of it. It's not what you've probably expected to see. And I'm sure that has thinned the herd. Because <laughs> most will write this off as a, as a, uh, a psychotropic rant. So, when prompted with the family that already exists in dialog box, if you want, select over the existing version, if you'd like. I, I don't personally care. 
What's in a name? Let's just make, make sure uh, we've got this correct. If multiple projects or families are open, you can select the files into which you want to load the family. We only have one project open. You are trying to load the family C13 fixed window, which already exists in the project. What do you want to do? Well, we have two choices. We can overwrite the existing version or overwrite the existing version and its parameter values. Now, if you remember, we clicked the window and it, we had checked some boxes. Or did we? Rewind. Did we set any parameter values of this window prior uh, to editing the window family? Because if you did, then you can overwrite them or you're not. You'll, you'll inherit those parameters if they still exist. If you deleted the parameter, it won't be there anymore. If you edited a parameter, it will. But if you want to learn a little more about this, click here to learn more. And you'll, you'll get to the uh, knowledge base. The, the Autodesk knowledge base is it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's uh, your manual. But here's the thing. You, you, you have to dig, and it doesn't always give you the solution to what you're looking for. You'll get help, online help. Um, you could call your consultant and they can work on a solution for you, if you like, if you subscribe to the software through a vendor. Uh, you, Autodesk doesn't really take many troubleshooting calls, unless, of course, you partner with Autodesk and they develop the software for your firm. Uh, but there's so many consultants out there that are gonna uh, guide you along the way. You can call them up on the phone and you can subscribe to their service plan and they'll work on a solution and get back to you. Or you can you know, sit in queue and wait for a solution. Or you could join a forum. You could search for yourself. You can do data mine. And I'll be honest with you, that's how I find solutions. I data mine. I don't make many calls looking for the solutions to my consultants as far as trying to figure this software platform out and apply it in the real world. I don't have that luxury of uh, subscribing to a service plan uh, and a help desk. But that's not always a bad thing. So again, you can, you can get into the Autodesk knowledge base on your own time but, uh, and find your own solutions. And, and there's plenty of videos and instructional uh, classes that you can pay for at Lyd Lydia.com. And, and Balkan Architects are, are, are two that uh, are off the bat. Uh, are more, they're a little more professional. They're a little more refined and, and not as rough around the edges or abrasive. Uh, so it, it could be, you know, the right remedy for your audience. But they're not as, as abrasive as I am. <laughs> so, and they're not crazier than a shithouse rat. But we'll override the existing version. In the level one floor plan of the example project, that's where we are, and keep in mind, the family's still open. We didn't say load into project and close. We said load into project. The family's still open. And it's not saved. Just keep that in mind. In the level one floor plan of the example project, select the wall and click edit type from the properties palette. From the structure parameter, click edit. Now before we do that, let's look at the structure parameter. The structure parameter is editable. We saw the dialog box. Look at the, the parameter groups. Construction, graphics, materials and finishes, analytical properties, identity data. Okay, now, Fire rating on this one. Now, you know, some, pro some projects will open up and these parameters aren't there. And you wonder, ah, you're like, oh my God, I, I, I come stop there in one, how come it is in the other? Well, it's just a cumulative effort. It's a cumulative effort. So uh, it's your job to notice this. You have to dissect this software. You have to dissect it to understand not just that it, that it works, why it works, how it works, and what you can do to improve it. We're mastering. Mastering. Master, master 
where are the dreams that I've been after? Master, master, promised only last. We're mastering, we're, we're dubbing, we're mixing, we're, we're, we're impedance matching, we're, we're burning to disc, right? Version, we're versioning, we're versioning. All right, just again, just to let you know what you're really doing. Visual basic, visual programming. Embedding metadata into intelligent cloud-based imaginary cloud-based what? Cloud-based what? We have to base something. What are you going to base it on? On what perspective? You have to base something on. Paper. You base it on paper, right? We're going to base this onto paper someday. Or metal. Or just base it on a conceptualized, harnessed, electromagnetic, magnetized memory that exists within the cloud. That exists within the cloud. Within the ionosphere and the, the space between the core of the Earth, the troposphere, the ionosphere, within the isotopes that allow magnetized materials to remain in orbit around their covalent bonds. Now, that might sound like a science fiction movie to you, but I choose my words carefully. I choose my words carefully. Where is the memory? Where's the memory? We can't get into a geoscience class. You should. If you know anything about your environment, you should. You should get into your geoscience. Lightning strikes twice. Three times. They say lightning never strikes in the same spot twice. That's what they say. They. Them. You know. The ones that talk. The ones that talk at work. Some don't talk at work. Some go to work, do their job. They don't talk much unless talking or spoken to. You ever heard the old adage, speak when spoken to? If you got nothing to say that's constructive, then please don't say it. <laughs> this is a mix of instruction. It's a bit unorthodox. It's a bit acidic. <laughs> it's a bit Polish. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit Irish. But changing the culture of organization is something that you shouldn't take lightly. Your organization, my organization, whatever organization you think, we wouldn't want to run or influence a corrupt organization, would we? So, as Maiden plays in the background, nothing like a good uh, Iron Maiden tune to, to wake you up in the morning. Iron core. The truth about bonding, exothermic, endothermic processes. I'll make the rules. So, we're in the uh, level one floor plan of the example project. We're in the type properties dialog box, and we're about to go into the structures parameter to edit the assembly. So, let's do that. Notice that wrapping inserts do not wrap. Wrapping ends, none, it's still set. Function is set to exterior. And again, we'll just review. Course fill pattern is still none. It's just gonna be surrounded by a black outline when it's on course fill. But again, when it's on medium, it'll inherit the structural properties of its uh, assembly. In the edit assembly dialog box, find row one, which will have the function of finish one four, and will have the material masonry brick. 
Make sure the wraps option is checked. Well, there is, excuse me, row one, and there's a few rows. There's nine rows here, right? Finish one with a uh, cut hierarchy of four. It won't be cut by, uh, won't be cut by five. But it'll be cut by one, two, and three. If it encounters it, it becomes coplanar or coincident with it. Thickness, uh, three, three and five eighths of an inch. And make sure the checkbox wraps is checked. Set the wrapping at inserts option to exterior. Cancel. I want you to see it actually happen. Let's move the wall up to here. I didn't move the wall, I panned my view with the mouse wheel. I pushed down the mouse wheel and panned my view. Select the window. Edit type. I'm sorry, select the wall. Oops, what am I doing? Select the wall. Edit type. Finish one floor, select wraps. Default wrapping, add inserts, exterior, and I'm going to hit OK. I'm just going to hit apply. And you'll see that it wrapped. Where did it wrap to? Do you remember the closure reference point? It wrapped to the closure reference point. You should now see, we'll close both dialog boxes. You should now see the masonry layer wrapping into the opening in the wall created by the inserted window. You can now customize the depth at which um, the brick will wrap. Select the window. I'm oh, sounding a bit pompous. Select the window and click edit type button. Notice the, uh, the properties of the window. And notice the parameters of the window. And type, family type parameters. This will affect all of these types. Now notice, um, find the... Uh, I'm sorry, select the window and click the edit type button from the properties palette. Find the exterior wall closure parameter and change the value to 0 foot 6 and 5 eighths of an inch or 177 millimeters. We said it was defaulted at uh, 11 and 5 eighths, so we could just set this to 6. You notice the space between. Uh, we didn't get into this yet, even though they really should. But they, they didn't talk about the, the unit input. Now, if I try six, five, slash eight inches, you can get a different result. So you have to make sure that um, you see this, there's a suffix of a foot um, apostrophe, and then a space between feet and inches, and then a space between inches and fractions of an inch, whole inches and fractions of an inch. And we can get into setting units up later, if you're into decimal feet, or decimal foot inch fractions. What is it, 6.825? Uh, 6 6.325? Do you know? <laughs> Look at your cubicle. But check your uh, chart. Uh, 6.325? I don't remember. What's five divided by eight? Select the window <laughs> and click the edit type from the properties palette. Find the exterior wall. You do the math. And change the value to six and five eighths. Click OK to close the type parameter dialog box. Notice how the depth of the wrap masonry layer changes in the plain view. Let's hit apply. You see how it went from the closure to the, uh, we, we, could, we adjusted the reference plane, the closure reference plane and constrained it to the exterior of the wall. And we made it a variable so that uh, whatever, again, 
you get it, but I'm just going to say it. So that as we change this dimension parameter, six year wall closure parameter, that uh, that distance can be adjusted. And now, as you can see, um, how uh, the, the, the depth of the wrap masonry layer changes. So now that we're going to be talking about adding wall articulation soon or next. And this is a long way to go for this video. It's a long way to go. But again, the axe that you and I may be grinding maybe should be a bit dulled. <laughs> I don't have an axe to grind. But I've been around the block. I've seen teams do this and have a wall set up so that they dictate policy as to how this particular project or these projects should be approached from an engineering perspective. They're very adamant, some are very adamant about how the process should go. Moving people around like chess pieces, professing to know building information modeling. And there's a lot of smoke and mirrors involved. And the horse and pony show uh, is great when you're included in the horse and pony show, but when you're left in the lurch and uh, food gets taken off your table, you better be prepared for a fight. But never let them see you sweat. Never let them see you sweat. This is for three-year-olds, this class. This isn't for 50-year-olds. This isn't for 21-year-olds. This is for the generation that's paying attention. You know, this is a competitive world we live in. People become very, very, very comfortable in their comfort zones, getting that check every week. Not ruffling too many feathers, not rocking the boat. What does they say? Rock the boat, don't tip the boat over. It doesn't necessarily have to be a fist fight all the time. But when push comes to shove, uh, we're talking about walls, aren't we? We're talking about walls. Some walls are very exclusive. Some you can't get over, some you can't get around, and some you can't get through. Mental blocks are walls. Learning curves are walls. Think of, think of this as a, a learning curve wall that you, as an individual or an organization, can utilize to your benefit. And, and is the benefit putting other firms out of business or putting people on the unemployment line? Or is, you, is your business empowering others to, uh, to achieve a solution to uh, a certain degree to ensure that the walls that you built are uh, beneficial to the incubator. Lots of incubators. <laughs>